Hi, today we'll be starting from a challenge, not mine for once, and that is get these sort of blobby gradients. Let's take a better look at that. So as you can see, the darker part is not really in the middle of the Alps. It's in the upper part and the color gradient goes from top to bottom. And you also have this sort of noise here. So yeah, that's what we'll be doing today. Uh, we'll be creating this on the pseudo elements of the body. So we're going to have body before and after. Okay, uh, we're going to use the fixed positioning. So position fixed. Okay, we're going to set inset zero. And this is basically a shorthand for top zero, right zero, bottom zero, left zero. And it has pretty good support at this point. Um, I'm not really sure, but yeah, it's pretty much green all over except Internet Explorer and blah. That doesn't matter. Okay. Now, having done this, we are going to also set this to make sure that it's behind any content in the body. Okay. And um, then, and of course, content, because otherwise nothing's going to show up, right? Um, and the bottom one is going to be before. And let's give it a black background. Okay, so it looks something like that. And we're going to use a noise uh, filter on this. So we're going to have SVG. Oh, yeah, I, I'm i forgetting uh, what I'm typing there. Okay, so it's going to be SVG and we're going to have a filter right here. And this is going to need an ID. So we can reference it from the CSS. Okay, um, and then we're going to have we're going to have a turbulence filter. And um, yeah, there's uh, an article about how to create patterns with this. And I don't really get how this works. Uh, I just use some random values. I don't, yeah, it, it's more of a trial and error in my case. I don't really get how this sort of stuff works. I've tried to get it a uh, couple of years back and I never got anywhere. I'm going to leave a link to this Twitter thread because it has links to some resources that I found myself and other people have suggested, but I, I seriously didn't get this. I mean, this starts out pretty good as an explainer and I can get the 1D case, but then it moves to the 2D case and I'm just lost. I, I, don't, I don't get what's happening anymore. So uh, yeah let's get back to this and I'm sorry but I can't explain how this works because I don't understand myself sorry about that so we're going to have a type and this is going to be fractal noise I think that's how you write it um, if that's not how you write it then it's not going to work so we'll see that in a moment let's say it's going to be something like 0.5 Okay, so now we're going to use here filter uh, and we're going to use a reference to that. And now we're going to see whether it works or not. And yeah, it worked. So yeah, basically you change these values, right? And you get more blurry as you decrease them. More, yeah, more like this. Um, and if you make, if you make it bigger, something like this, you get more graininess, more like this. So it looks like that. Okay, so this is going to be the before. And um, for the after, we're going to have a gradient, uh, which let's say it's going to be a linear gradient. Um, I don't even know. Navy, aqua, should do. Okay, so you see that one on top. And let's maximize the CSS again. And here, once more, we're going to use a mask. So, um, WebKit mask, um, let's say a radial gradient from red to transparent. Okay, so the thing with CSS masks is that they're alpha masks and only the alpha channel matters. So you can see now how it's going 
let's make this to 70% so you get to and it's starting to look like something uh, but if we also use uh, something like mix blend mode color it's going to look more interesting because you get you get better graininess uh, to call it that way so um, yeah now the thing with the this mix blend mode is that as you can see right here so you can switch between uh, a few different ones so here it takes uh, the hue and saturation of the top layer which is uh, the gradient this navy to aqua gradient so the hue and the saturation and um, the luminosity of the bottom layer which is that uh, noise layer right so you can see it takes the hue and the saturation and uh, now here let's just make this uh, gray okay and you can see the result had gets darker as we decrease that and there i'm just decreasing uh, the lightness but uh, yeah that uh, really affects the luminosity as well so uh, the luminosity is not the same thing as lightness but uh, when one decreases the other one decreases and the other way around when one increases the other one increases so yeah now let's get back here and um, make that gradient a bit better let's say so um, let's just use that as a custom property like this okay so um, let's make this at 25% so something like that okay and let's introduce another stop here now there is another article on this I don't really like that transition there those um, you can see the separation between white and that and I don't really like and I want to smoothen that one and there's an article on easing linear gradients and um, yeah well I tried the approach from this article a bunch of times and I still don't get results that I like so and it looks good in the article but if I adapt it to my demos it just doesn't work anymore so I don't know yeah I'm going to link to that just in case maybe you're more competent with getting that work working but uh, here i'll be using rgba uh, red uh, something like 0.2 and we're going to put this at 50 percent so something like that and i think we can do something um, so we can have a mask here and we're going to use gradient and another one so two gradient layers one on top of the other and we're going to intersect them basically so mask and webkit mask composite uh, source in so something like that and it is starting to look better uh, we're kind of losing that uh, I don't know if we go someplace like that we're going to yeah we're seeing it better like that I don't know 15 so you can see or better yet we can change the orientation of this so 90 degrees and let's say we're going to have something like purple make it more interesting um, bring that at 20 percent or something so yeah um also uh this is not going to work in firefox so in firefox we have the standard version and that's going to be just um, mask like this but um, mask composite the standard version is intersect which to me makes a lot more sense than source in because it's i don't know 
sourcing doesn't really have any meaning to me, but intersect, yeah, you can kind of think about that and it's more intuitive. I actually wrote an article about this and it's more intuitive that intersection is basically the product of the alphas of the two masking layers. So uh, add, uh, subtract, there has to be intersect somewhere here. Intersect, so yeah. I'm going to be linking to all the resources and I'm just uh, going to leave this one at this. I'm not going to tweak it any further. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, if you like the work that I'm putting out since early 2012 and you want me to be able to do more in the future, please consider supporting it. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon or if monthly support is not your style, there's the option of one-time donation or you can make me happy with a gift off my Amazon wishlist or you can at least share this to show the world what can be done with CSS and SVG these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and until next time, bye.